Most people start programming in the wrong way and it either slows them down or makes them quit entirely. That's why in this video, I'm gonna break down the five common traps that most beginners fall into and how to avoid those so you can actually level up as a software engineer. Trap number one is jumping between too many languages and frameworks. Look, as you get better as a developer, it's important to diversify your knowledge and learn a few different languages, jump into some different frameworks and mess around in different areas. However, when you're just getting started, you wanna do the opposite of that. You need to pick one programming language and focus on learning that for at least three months before you switch into anything else. So pick Python, JavaScript, Go, C++, whatever it is, I don't really care, but learn the fundamentals of that language, understand the syntax, and start learning how to solve problems with that language. After you do that, it's okay to switch to something else, but you don't wanna make the mistake of constantly switching between different languages, especially when you're just a beginner or trying to learn multiple of them at the same time. Focus on one, get decent in that language, then you can switch over and it's gonna be a lot easier than if you're constantly going between different ones. Now I say this because I made this exact mistake when I was starting out. I started learning how to code quite young, I didn't have a roadmap, I didn't really have a goal in mind, and because of that, I kept switching between different languages. I would learn a bit of PHP, then I would go into JavaScript, then I learned C Sharp, then I learned Python, and I never got good in one of these languages. It felt like every time I switched, I was just relearning the stuff I already knew, and then picking up all of the differences for that specific language. Sure, this gave me good domain knowledge, but I never got to the point where I could build something complex or felt confident and it was a huge hindrance to me at the beginning. So please stick with one language. Once you get decent at it, you can go to something else, but you need to put in a good amount of time with that first language. And by the way, one of the best ways to practice your programming skills is to work on small programming problems, not massive complex projects, at least when you're starting out. And because of that, I actually created a free newsletter where I send you a ton of coding challenges completely for free. I also have project ideas in there, general tips and insights, and I even made a lead magnet, which is how to make money from coding, which I'll give you completely for free if you sign up for the newsletter from the link in the description. Anyways, let's get into trap number two, which is overloading on tutorials. Now this is a bit ironic because I am a tutorial channel. I make money from you guys watching my tutorials, but I also want the best for you and I don't want you just to spend every single day of your life binge watching my videos and hearing my beautiful voice. The point is you need to spend more time working on your own than you do watching other people code. When you're starting out, it is very important to have some guidance, to have a mentor, to have someone teaching you and to watch things like the videos I have on my channel. But as you get better and better and further along in your journey, you need to make sure that you spend a majority of your time actually writing code with your hands on the keyboard, working on projects, running into problems, debugging your code, and doing all of the things that I would do when I prepare tutorial videos. So yes, tutorials are fantastic. You should use them and you can learn a ton from them, but you wanna make sure you balance out your learning and for every tutorial you watch, you should be spending at least that amount of time doing something on your own. Don't get stuck in the famous tutorial hell where all you do all day is binge watch videos, you feel like you know it, and then all of a sudden you hop on the computer and you have no idea what to do. To avoid that, make sure you code along with the tutorials. Anything you watch, try to apply it immediately after and spend at least the same amount of time writing code on your own as you do watching other people do it. Now this third trap is so incredibly common and I blame the traditional education system for this. Now that is simply memorizing code rather than trying to understand it. Now look, when you go through elementary school and high school and even a lot of university, most of what you need to do is simply memorize concepts. If you can do that, you'll be able to pass, you'll probably even get good grades, and most systems reward people for simply memorizing a ton of useful knowledge rather than truly understanding something and using your critical thinking skills. However, in programming, it's really the complete opposite. In order to be a good developer, you don't actually need to memorize all of the syntax, but you need to really understand how to use these tools and have a lot of practice using them. So yes, things like for loops and if statements and the very basic syntax, things that you're gonna write hundreds or if not thousands of times, you'll end up memorizing it just because you use it a lot. But you don't need to focus on memorizing all of these abstract methods that maybe change a string in something like Python or all of the tools within this framework. You need to focus on actually understanding what's going on, 
the flow of the program and how to break down complex problems. So please don't overwhelm yourself by writing massive lists and huge notes with every single method and every single little piece of syntax. It's totally fine if you forget something, you should just know, hey, there's probably this thing. I remember seeing this before. I don't know the exact name or exactly how it works, but that's fine. I'm gonna go look it up and then I'm gonna use it. So it's more about being resourceful, knowing that these tools exist. And then later on, when you need the specific implementation, being comfortable going out there and looking for it. That's what I do every single day. Sometimes I even forget some basic Python syntax or some random JavaScript methods. You guys as beginners might even know some of those better than me because I just don't use them as much as you do. So the point is don't focus on memorizing, focus on understanding and be comfortable not knowing every single method or every single line, but be willing to go look it up and find the answer when you need it. Now, trap number four usually happens a bit later in your coding journey, and that is expecting to master it quickly. A lot of people get into software development and they see all these stories of people that learned how to code in three months or four months and were able to land jobs, and they expect that that's going to be them. The reality is this field does take a good amount of time to get into, especially a good amount of time to get really good at. Mastering software development is not something that will happen quickly. And when you get into this field, you should set the goal of this being a long-term sustainable career, not something that you just wanna blitz through as quickly as you can. So please go into this with the expectation that this is gonna take you a lot of time. That is totally fine. And the more time that this takes you, the better software engineer you're going to become. Now I say this because a lot of people get really discouraged when they're not landing internships or they haven't had a really massive project they've worked on or they haven't won a hackathon in the first three months of them learning how to code. This takes everybody a different amount of time and I'll give you an experience personally from myself. A lot of people think when they watch this channel and they watch some of my older live streams that I'm just like this coding prodigy, that I was just born with a super high IQ and I can just do this super easily. That couldn't be further from the truth. And you have to remember, I started learning how to code when I was 12. It wasn't until I was about 16, 17 years old that I was even decent at coding. Some of you guys watching this have probably been learning to code for three, four, five months. Maybe you have a really solid roadmap or you've gone through something like my software development program and you're already a better programmer than I was after doing this for four or five years. So it takes everyone a completely different amount of time. Some people get this really naturally. Some people, it takes a lot more effort. The point is this is gonna take a long amount of time and you need to go into this with that expectation. Now, one way to help you stay motivated because this is a long journey is to make sure you have a goal and a roadmap. I've been saying this a lot recently because it's so incredibly important. You need to know that you're making progress. You need to have at least some kind of checklist of the type of things that you're learning or some achievements that you can check off. That way you know, hey, I'm looking back three months from now, at this point, I was only this far on my roadmap and now I've made it all the way to here. So even if the progress is slow, at least it's progress. And if you know you're working towards some kind of end goal, you can see how far you've come and it can keep you motivated to keep going. It's just like investing. You start really slow and then as the years go on, it compounds and compounds and compounds and you can see how far you've come and how big your portfolio has grown. Now, trap number five is feeling overwhelmed with too many resources. In today's age, it's easier to learn how to code than it ever has been. There's so many fantastic resources out there, many of them paid, many of them free. The point is that you have unlimited options, unlimited places you can go to learn, and a lot of people get really overwhelmed by that, and they end up either just not doing anything or really jumping between so many different areas like one of the first traps I mentioned. So it's so important today that you spend time up front to research the different resources available and then pick one and stick with it. For example, if you really like my videos, if you mesh with my teaching style, then watch a bunch of the tutorials that I have. Use me as a resource to learn how to code. However, if maybe my style is not for you, you don't like the way I talk, whatever, go and use someone else. But don't jump between so many different things constantly because it's gonna be very difficult to keep track of where you are and you're constantly gonna be changing environments and kind of starting over with the new resource. So if you find a really good course that works for you, go with it, run with it, finish it, right? Get through that resource and use all of that value. Now, of course, it's okay to look at different people. It's okay to use different resources and I encourage this, but I just don't want you to get overwhelmed and it's much better to find one high quality resource and stick with that and then move on to the next one rather than constantly switching and spending half your day looking for the next video or the next lesson you're going to watch. And with that in mind, if you do want a fantastic and much more interactive resource to learn these types of things, then check out the sponsor of today's video, which is brilliant.
Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. They adopt a first principles approach, ensuring you understand the why behind each concept. Every lesson is interactive, engaging you in hands-on problem solving, which has proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lectures. The content is developed by top-notch educators, researchers, and professionals from renowned institutions like MIT, Caltech, and Google. Brilliant emphasizes enhancing your critical thinking abilities through active problem solving rather than memorization. As you learn specific subjects, you're simultaneously training your mind to think more effectively. Consistent daily learning is crucial and Brilliant makes it effortless with their bite-sized lessons, allowing you to acquire meaningful knowledge in just a few minutes each day, perfect for replacing idle screen time. Additionally, Brilliant offers a comprehensive range of computer science and Python courses, as well as extensive AI workshops guiding you from a complete beginner to an expert through practical, hands-on lessons. Try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash techwithtim or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.